In our first episode on this series, we looked at the problem. We stated the problem, which happened to be that the sea fishing of the coast of India has been taken over by mechanized trawlers. They go to the very bottom and they scrape everything, including the sea grass, which makes sustainability very, very difficult. So we talked about all this and the need for these trawlers to now go and fish off of Sri Lankan waters. What kind of catch? What is the seafood industry? What is the price? Uh, they, you know, every uh, trip, they make close to 1.25 lakhs worth of uh, fish. I mean, this is a strict profit, I'm told. I'm sure something like that, you know, again, is varies depending on the catch. Maybe it'll even higher. So whole seafood processing industry that is waiting to take this catch and, you know, make it them in, you know, nice looking cans and then, you know, put them in frozen containers and ship it worldwide. All that is happening. And, and all that relies on this catch and these trawlers now being are being forced to go to Sri Lanka to go and fish there because there is no more fish available in, on the Indian coast. However, India has recognized this problem and there are some palliative measures being put in place. And I'm going to talk about that also. So here we go. This is part two. Now here is how trawlers look like and this is a picture taken near Rameshwaram and you can see that it is completely filled with these trawlers. They have some sort of a, a motor that runs and that kind of puts out the net and it just goes in. I'm sure there is some sort of a device that drags it down to the co uh, to the floor of the ocean bed see park bay is a shallow bay this i've told you again right so it's very easy to scrape from the bottom of the barrel and get in all the fish so here is one uh, trawlers near rameshwaram here is how they look like there is a trawler and a long liner fishing vessel and again these are technical terms but essentially what they do is they scoop up everything right from the bottom of the from the bed of the sea which is what makes it really really bad if if the park bay is by and large only 10 to 15 meters deep it's easy right not doesn't doesn't take a lot of uh, effort and not only that these people just go in and elbow out everybody else and they do this next it is mentioned in one of Jayalalitha's uh, addresses, the video of which I have, and I'll probably put that as an unlisted video for those of you who want to know exact details. Now, she claims, and this is, she was the ADMK president, and she will obviously point fingers at the DMK politicians. Uh, she mentions about T.R. Balu having a bunch of uh, uh, fishing vessels and Kanimori also having a bunch of fishing vessels. You know both of them. T.R. Balu is the leader of DMK in the parliament as well as Kanimori is uh, the daughter of uh, Muthuvel Karunanidhi and stepsister of uh, uh, M.K. Stalin. Now, what are the company details? According to this video of Jailalta, the majority share ownership of Meenam Fisheries Limited is owned by Balu and his two wives, Porkodi and Renuka Devi. Don't be surprised if one of them is a Brahmin. By the way, T.R. Balu, for the record, is a Devar. And likewise, Kanimori, who claims to be a Nada, her father created a new caste called <laughs> Isai Velada, never existed before that. And, and uh, so she's now claiming her mother's side roots and saying, oh, no, 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 I'm a Nada. <laughs> These people always talk about social justice, but they'll always claim to be part of one majority community or the other. So she has majority ownership in another trawler firm called Westgate Logistics. So you know that these people, all of them have these trawlers. So they're making money hand over fist and they are relying on the on outraging the people's sentiment saying that Sri Lanka is imprisoning our fishermen. They are making their lives miserable, completely conveniently omitting the fact that we were the ones who sent them there. Right. So now what has happened in September 2022, very late, I would think, Tamil Nadu has issued a government gazette where they recognize that a certain area near Tanjavur, I think I showed you the Park Bay picture in the first episode. You can go back and take a look at it, that the Park Bay is shallow as well as it suggests detailed steps to rejuvenate the ecosystem and how to go about doing it. There is this fish called 
dugong and i'm told that this can be as big as 25 kilos that's a pretty heavy fish and and because the the bottom trawlers you know uh, grabbed even the sea grass it, it's going to go back we have to go back and replant the sea grass and make sure that the ecosystem comes back again but for that these mechanized trawlers have to stay away will they stay away well we have to wait and see what happens so this are this is just one method there are other methods that can be used and i'm going to touch upon some of those methods and also a political long term solution in the third and final part of this series and that will come in a few days from now thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar